like you hurt me too Welcome to service. We are so glad to see you tonight. If this is your first time joining us online, 
We would love to know about it. Would you let us know in the comments below by putting a, a hand wave emoji or letting us know it's my first time. We would love to connect with you. As we get ready to go into worship, I'm gonna pray us in and it's my prayer that you have an amazing time in worship. Lean in and know that God is with you wherever you are. God, as we worship you tonight, we pray that you would be with us, that you would uh, help us to enter into your presence, God, that you would meet us where we are, God, and that we would be drawn close to your heart, God, as we enter into your presence for worship. Father, take away all of the distractions, God, so that our focus could be on you. It's in your mighty name that we pray. Amen.
we pray in your presence that you continue to move, that you continue to move mountains and break past boundaries, God. God, that mountains would crumble at your feet, Father, and that the impossible we could, would become possible, Jesus. We need a move of your spirit in our country, Father, God, in our homes. Jesus, let it happen. Let it happen, and we give you the glory for it. In God's name we pray. Amen. It's Hannah from the Freeport campus. Hey, we are in week two of our series Anthem, which talks about all about how we can live a lifestyle of worship to God. And last week, if you caught the message, man, Pastor Manny called us all out on if we live a lifestyle that presents trash or if it presents worship to God. And so hopefully this series can challenge you um, and really make you think about what your lifestyle is like. And so tonight we're going to talk about prayer. But before we do, I'm going to start off with a verse. So if you have your Bibles um, or your phone, you can turn to Romans 12, 1 through 2. And I'm going to read this for us. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. So I know Mandy explained this last week, but many times when we think of worship, we think of it as just a song that we sing, or maybe it's only like worship time at Crave, or worship time at a weekend service or it's specifically a song that you like, but really we're talking about worship as a lifestyle. So it reaches far past just a song. It reaches far past just a moment. It's truthfully something that we live our life as. And so today we're talking about prayer as worship. And some of you might be like, well, that seems very separate to me, or I don't really understand how that can be worship. Simply put, when we worship God, we elevate Him above all of our circumstance, all of the things that we go through, our wants, our desires, our needs. We put Him first when we worship Him. And that's exactly what prayer does. Prayer puts Him first. Prayer puts what He wants above what we want. Prayer puts His will over ours. Prayer aligns us with his heart and allows us to have a conversation about what he wants from us and wants us to do. Really, it just gives us a connection with the Father. And, I, you know, I was thinking about prayer and in a society where we are really recommended only to pray in desperate times. If you've ever heard the, the phrase, desperate times call for desperate measures, it seems like prayer is only appropriate in those desperate times. But once that family member gets healed, or once that test is passed, or once that tragedy is over, we forget that prayer can still be a part of our life. And so we want to change our thinking on what prayer is and what it can be. So tonight I'm going to give you a few pointers on how to make prayer more a part of your life and make it worship and make it consistent in your life. So point one tonight, prayer, it's not complicated. It's not complicated. I think a lot of times we make it out to be this big thing that it has to be fancy or perfect. I can't tell you how many times I've been in Crave and I've been like, hey, do you want to pray for us? And somebody's like, well, I don't know how or I haven't prayed out loud before. Let me tell you that it is not, it is not something that is complicated or meant to be something that is this fancy speech. Um, in fact, I'll tell you in a second that Jesus talks about not doing that. 
you know, prayer is meant to be a conversation, an everyday thing where you and God talk, you ask him things, you thank him for things. And I'll tell you in my life, you know, what prayer looks like for me, um, it might sound silly to you, but one of the first things that I thought of is when I'm driving down the road, and I know you're probably gonna laugh, but when I'm driving down the road and I see like an animal hit on the road, uh, like if it's a cat, which I love cats, by the way, uh, if I see a cat hit on the road, I automatically just start praying for the owner. Um, if they have one, I'm like, Lord, just give them peace, help them. Some of you who don't like cats are like, thank you, God, that the cat died. No, no, that is, no, no. We love our little furry friends. Um, you know, I pray in moments where I see an ambulance going, I just reach out my hand and I say, Lord, you know, protect uh, the people involved, give first responders wisdom. I pray for when I see crosses on the side of the road, uh, when I get in my car, when I get up in the morning, I tend to kneel beside my bed and I just say, God, thank you for this day. Um, it allows me to put him at a higher place in my life. When I'm scrolling through social media, if somebody's asked for prayer, I say a prayer right there. It doesn't have to be anything complicated. It's God, just be with them. Show them your peace and your goodness and your kindness. If I see someone has posted something on social media and I think maybe that individual is feeling you know, insecure about themselves or they really need just prayer for self-esteem or to feel worthy, you know, I pray for that as well. And so it's just these daily little things. Maybe you, you start to pray at a certain time or, or, or a certain uh, place in your day if you go to your locker or something, but it's just involving God in your day to day. And again, prayer is not meant to be fancy or perfect. In fact, Jesus tells us that he doesn't want it to be like that because what it does is when you're trying to make yourself look better with prayer, it takes God out of it. It makes you the center of attention rather than glorifying God. So if you have your Bibles, I want you to turn to Matthew 6, 5 through 13. I'm going to read this. This is what Jesus tells us. Um, he's instructing people and he says, And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father who is unseen. Then your Father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. And when you pray, don't keep on babbling like pagans, for they think they'll be heard because of their many words. Don't be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask him. Then this is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we have also forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. So Jesus tells us that it doesn't have to be something complicated. And if we're doing it to sound good, that we really just shouldn't. And so then he teaches us how to pray. So I've always heard you know, use the Father, this is called the Lord's Prayer, use the Lord's Prayer as a guide of how to pray. And I'm like, that's great, but man, that sounds fancy to me. That sounds like what I'm not supposed to be doing, right? I don't think I've ever said, hallowed be thy name in any prayer or thy. Um, so I'm going to break this down a little bit. So he gives it to us more as an instruction manual. So if you take, a, take apart the prayer and you look at the pieces, that's more what we're, we're going to be paying attention to. So when he says, our Father, our Father signifies that we're talking to our dad. We're talking to someone that we have a relationship with. We're not talking to some far off God. We're talking to someone who cares about us. And when it says our Father, it's talking about us being one with Jesus. Because when we accept Jesus, we can go to the Father on his behalf. Um, it talks about no one comes to the Father except through the Son. And so when it's talking about our Father, we're coming with Jesus because we're also uh, his sons and daughters. Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed means reminding us that he's holy. God is holy, which is important because we need to know that he can take care of us, that he's bigger than all of our problems, that he can take it from us. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Your kingdom come, your will be done. That means putting God before what we want and putting his wants above ours. So making sure that we're in line with what's going on, that we don't want our desires to be before his. Give us this day our daily bread. 
His word, his written and his spoken word is what we live off of as Christians. We need that to get through. We need encouragement. We need to know that we're loved. We need to know that even if we mess up, he's got us. And so that's what it means to have that daily piece of encouragement, our daily bread. Forgive us as we forgive others. Um, this is a reminder that the Lord forgives us, but then also we have, we have to be forgiving others. It talks about how at the measure of we forgive, are we forgiven? It's really important that we keep this at the forefront of our minds because sometimes, I don't know about you, but sometimes I can get all prideful and think I'm doing really well. But in reality, I have sin that comes into my life all the time. Am I forgiven? Yes, I am. But I still have to remind myself that I constantly need God's grace in this life to be able to be successful. Lead us from temptation. We all face temptation. And the Bible tes says that with God's help, that no temptation is too much for us to overcome. And so that's what we're asking the Lord in this piece. Deliver us from evil. We're simply asking for God's protection. We're simply asking for him to cover us and help us to get away from the enemy and for him to guide us and give us wisdom and how to do that. So that's a great way for you to kind of look at how to pray. It just gives us a breakdown. But again, make it simple. I just say things like, God, help, help this person. Help me. God, I'm struggling. Lord, I need you to come through right now. This test is about to really uh, be a tough one. So you can st say stuff like that. Like it doesn't have to be all crazy fancy. It just needs to come from your heart. Uh, don't be fake about it. Be real. Talk to God like you would talk to a friend. Um, and he hears you. Know that he hears you. Point number three, prayer, it's not about you. It's not about you. Um, when I s hear people say, prayer doesn't work, or I've tried that and nothing happened, like I get, I get what you're saying, and I've, some, I've felt that periodically. I know we all go through periods of that. But the one thing that I came to realize is the reason why it hadn't worked for me is because I had this expectation that it should have already happened by that time. Or this is a different outcome than I was thinking. You've got to understand that this is a whole bigger picture. And let's talk about that for a second. You know, prayer really isn't about us and it's about God's bigger picture, okay? Really, we weren't even supposed to be able to have the prayer like we do without Jesus. Because way back when in the Old Testament, you know, sin separated us from God and sacrifices had to be made for us to have a personal relationship with God. Like they had to sacrifice goats and birds and different things like that to be able to be covered by God's, by God's grace then. But when Jesus came, um, he allowed that door to be opened and they could pray in the Old Testament, but they still had to make sure they were checking the list off of, are, are, am I covered by this blood? You know, but when Jesus came, he opened that door so that we didn't have to worry about continuous sacrifice. He became that for us and opened the door wide open for such a personal relationship with God. Um, he literally tore the veil that separated the presence of God. Um, from us. And so we have prayer and it is a gift. And so we need to use it. And then the last point tonight, prayer is worship, but you have to choose it. You have to choose it. So I have this pedestal here and what pedestals are created for is to elevate something and display something that is of value. And so tonight I'm asking you, what do you put on your pedestal? What do you put as something that's important in your life? What do you elevate? Maybe, maybe you elevate something like anxiety. Maybe this is something that you talk about a lot, but you don't pray about a lot. Maybe this is something that you claim that you have, but you've never really dealt with it. You've never talked to God about it. You've never gone to him and asked for wisdom on how to do things to rid yourself of this. Maybe this is something you put on your pedestal and maybe you don't even really realize that you're doing it. Maybe it's worry. Maybe every time you have a big test or um, maybe every time, you know, something happens in your life, you just begin to worry. 
Uh, maybe it's with friendships, maybe it's about your body image, maybe it's about different things, maybe it's about social media. You just begin to worry. And that's something you place on your pedestal because you haven't talked to God about it. You haven't gone to Him with this. And so then maybe it's busyness. Maybe you, maybe you run so hard, I've struggled with this. Maybe you run so hard day to day, you're involved in so many things, you do so much, and you put this over time with God. You put this over prayer. You put this over talking to God about your problems. This is a priority in your life, and maybe, again, you don't even realize it. Maybe it's school. Maybe you're so focused on getting that A and getting those good grades or fitting in that you just lose sight of everything else and you legitimately put God to the side. Maybe it's, you know, you're striving so hard and you forget about the other things because this has become a priority and been put on your pedestal as something that you value. Maybe it's friendships. Friendships, these are a big one because they can really show you where you're going to go in life. Are you going this way or that way? Who, who are you hanging out with? Show me your friends and I'll show you your future. Maybe you really care about what somebody thinks more than what you're supposed to be caring about with your relationship with God. And last one, and there's many more. These are just some examples today. Maybe it's relationships. Maybe you've gotten to a relationship with a guy or a girl and you all of a sudden forget that God even exists. Um, maybe they're your priority now. Maybe you kind of just cut corners and you sneak a little bit more time to see them or you stay later out spending time with them versus getting up in the morning and doing devotions. You completely forget to even pray if this person is right for you to be with. So you make all these decisions and you have these things on your pedestal, but truthfully, the thing that needs to be at the top of your pedestal is prayer. You need to pray. You need to make a decision to pray about these things. You need to make a decision to put these things forward and at the front of your life. Underneath of prayer, prayer needs to be the center, the, the, the focus of your life, and everything needs to come under that. And so today, you need to look and evaluate what's on your pedestal. What do you put at the top? Because when we put our problems at the top of our pedestal and we elevate our circumstance, we take away from the capability of our Creator. God can take care of your friendships. He can take care of that worry in your life. He can help you with that anxiety. He can free up your schedule and show you how if you're so busy. But when we take God off of the pedestal and we take prayer and the connection to Him off of the pedestal, that's when things start to get tricky and they start to get muddy. We have to keep him at the top and at the forefront. So that's my question today. Will you choose to pray? Will you choose to make prayer uh, a part of your lifestyle, prayer as worship? Because it is. It's elevating God. You know, if you're looking at this tonight and you're like, I really don't know how I'm going to do this, I'll tell you that it's nearly impossible to do this without God's help. And so you need to ask him for that help. And then maybe some of you, you know, you've never asked God to help you. You've never called on God uh, to come into your life. You've never received Jesus' salvation. And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lead you in a prayer tonight to accept Jesus as your Savior. So just across our campuses and online, I, just, I would ask you right now, would you just close your eyes and bow your head for me? Living a life where worry and anxiety, busyness, relationships are at the forefront of your life, it's overwhelming. Social media, all of that, we were never meant to do it all. But we were meant to live a life knowing that God loves us and putting God at the top of our pedestal. So tonight, if you decide that you really want to make that change in your life, you really want to make that shift in your life, I want you to raise your hand right now. Even if you're at home watching, no matter if you're at a campus, I want you to raise your hand right now. Your leaders can see. If you said tonight, I want to make a decision to accept Jesus as my Savior, raise your hand. 
with everyone's head bowed and eyes still closed, I would like everyone, everyone listening to my voice right now, I want you to repeat this prayer after me. Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for me. I acknowledge that you are the Son of God. I acknowledge that you can save me and have saved me. Lord, help me live a life for you as I step into your grace today. In Jesus' name, amen. If you pray that prayer today, I want to make sure that you tell somebody because that's the best decision you've ever made in your life, elevating God above all other things. We're so proud of you. Congratulations on making the best decision of your life, Grave Youth. We love you. Hey, if you prayed that prayer with our pastor tonight, we want to know about it. Would you let us know in the comments below by typing in, I prayed, uh, and we want to resource you as you begin your new walk in Christ. As always, Crave, thank you for being here. We love you, we're for you, and we're praying that you have a fantastic week. The